magan sa IPS, Information Technology Skills. On this video, pag-usapan natin ang functions in Python programming. So, let's start. First, what is a function? A function is a block of code which only runs when it is called. So, basically, pag sinabi natin function, guys, these are block of codes or line of codes na gagana lang or it will perform its action or mag execute kapag tinawag mo. You can pass a data known as parameter into a function. So, mamaya malalaman natin kung ano yung parameter na yan. And, a function can return na data as a result. Okay? So, kung meron kang binigay dun sa function na parameter, minsan, meron din siyang binabalik. So, here guys, let's have the different types of a function. We have the built-in function and the user-defined functions. Okay, so if we say built-in functions, they are the predefined functions provided by Python. So, pag sinabi natin built-in function from the word built-in, andun na po sa programming language na ginagamit natin yung function na yun. So, an example of that are the input, output, yung input natin, the range, and others. Okay? So, these type of functions are the functions or codes that we use on our previous um, examples. Tapos, pag sinabi naman natin user-defined functions, it is a functions defined by the programmer depending upon his own requirement. So, basically, pag sinabi natin user-defined functions, ito naman yung function na hindi binigay ni Python programming. So, dahil wala siya sa Python programming natin or dun sa programming language na ginagamit natin, ito ay gagawin ni programmer or siya ang create para tawagin na lang niya kapag kailangan niya. So, in creating a user-defined function, we have the syntax. We have the keyword def that is for definition and the function name. This function name can be any object name that you want or variable name that you want. And of course, inside the parentheses is the parameter that the function name or the function can receive. So now guys, dito na tayo sa code natin. You can use any Python IDLE that you have. So, when creating a function, kailangan muna natin siyang ilagay dun sa taas or before natin siya tawagin. Okay? So, let's have the def keyword that is for definition or the start of a function and we have the function name. So, sabihin na lang natin magkocompute tayo ng numbers. Okay? So, let's have the function name as compute and yung parameter po niya. So, ngayon, ang parameter niya is empty. Parenthesis lang ang nandito. Okay? So, wala siyang i-accept na parameter. Pagka-enter natin, makikita nyo na meron ng indention. Ibig sabihin na yung mga line of codes na ilalagay natin ngayon dito are part of the function compute. So, try muna natin mag-print ng value ng 5 plus 7. So, ganito lang muna yung function natin. Ngayon, paano naman ito gagana? Kasi, pag ito ni-run natin, wala siyang output. Okay? So, bakit wala siyang output? Kasi, hindi pa natin tinawag yung function. Don't forget that a function will perform or only executes its code kapag tinawag mo siya. So, how do we call a function? Lumabas lang kayo dun sa may indention. Kasi, ibig sabihin nga, pag sinabi natin indention, that is part of the function. So, labas lang kayo sa indention. Dapat yung insertion point natin in line with the def and call the function. To call a function, tawagin mo lang yung pangalan niya. Okay? So, we have compute na name. Then, of course, don't forget the parentheses. Hindi yan mawawala dapat sa function when calling it. Okay, so yung parentheses natin empty ulit siya because wala talaga tayong ipapas na parameter for our function. Now, let's try to run it again. Ngayon, meron na tayong makikitang output na 12. Okay, so bakit 12? Because print lang naman natin yung 5 plus 7. Try natin kumuha ng input from the user and that input will be passed kay function compute Tapos yun ang i-add niya sa 7. Add again this code. Make sure na nasa labas tayo ng function compute. Kasi ang gagawin lang ng function compute is to print the number plus 7. Then copy this code and I'll be explaining what it means. Okay, ngayon guys, meron tayong dinagdag na variable num1. This variable num1 will be input by the user and i-convert natin yun into integer. Okay? So, itong variable na to, yun ang ibibigay natin kay function compute. But before maka-accept si function yung compute, dapat meron siyang parameter. Let's say meron siyang parameter x. Itong parameter x na to, siya ang magre-receive ng value na pinasa natin dun sa 
function call. Dito sa function call, ilagay natin dito yung num1. Ito yung in-input ni user. So, ibig sabihin, kung ano yung in-input ni user sa num1, yun din ang magiging value ng x. Ngayon, palitan natin tong 5 ng x dahil ika-add natin siya sa 7. So, bakit hindi num1 ang ilagay na lang natin? Bakit x? Kasi, itong num1 na to, kung titingnan natin, outside the function compute. So, ibig sabihin, hindi to pwedeng gamitin nung compute na function natin. Ang pwede niya lang gamitin is yung pinasa natin na value dun sa variable x. So, kung ano man yung value nung num1, yun din ang value nung variable x natin. So, print lang natin siya plus 7. So, ngayon, try natin itong i-run. So, we have here, enter a number. Yun po yung prompt natin para mag-input si user ng numbers. So, sabihin natin nag-input si user ng 20. Pag enter niyan, ang output is 27. So, bakit 27? Kasi nung nag-input si user, pinasa natin yung value nung num1 dun sa x. Kaya po, 20 na yung value nung x natin dito. And, nung in natin siya sa 7, of course, alam naman natin that 20 plus 7 is 27. So, ngayon guys, pag sinabi naman natin parameter, pwede pong wala, tulad nung ginawa natin kanina, pwede empty parameter, pwede din isa, dalawa, or many. So, pasubukan natin two parameters. So, let's say we have x and y. Okay? So, pwede po maraming parameter. Depende po dun sa program na gagawin ni programmer. So, let's say yung y naman natin is another input. Sabihin na lang natin that is num2. Okay? So, we have num1 and num2 that will be passed kay function compute. So, we have here num1, comma, num2. Okay, so that x and y will be added. So, we have x plus y. Ngayon, ang value ng num1 will be passed kay variable x. Siya pong magre-receive. Bakit siyang magre-receive? Kasi yun yung una natin pinasa na variable. So, ibig sabihin, ang unang magre-receive, of course, is the first parameter. Si num2 is yung y. So, ngayon guys, try natin tong iran. Okay, so we have here the first prompt. Enter a number, let's say 20 again. Then, we have another prompt that is 35. So, pag pinasa po natin yan, si 20, that is the num1, will be saved kay x. Si 35, that is num2, will be saved kay y. That's why, ang output po niya is 55. So, paano naman po yung meron tayong return? Magagamit lang natin yung return kapag meron tayong ibabalik dun sa main natin na program. So, asan po yung main natin? Ito po yung outside the function. So, let's say itong x and y natin, pag in natin yan, isave na lang natin siya sa isang variable total. And yun po ang ibabalik natin dun sa main na function. So, ngayon guys, remove natin to. Gamit tayo ng variable total. This total will compute or hold the sum of x and y. Then, gagamitin natin yung keyword na return. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong ibabalik dun sa tumawag sa kanya. Okay? So, ano ibabalik natin? Yung total. To do that, hindi na po pwede yung ganitong function call lang. Dapat, kung meron tayong i-return, dapat meron ding mag-hold dun sa binalik na total. Okay? So, let's say we're going to use another variable which is total din that is equal to compute num1 plus num2. Ibig sabihin, kapag na-compute na ito yung x and y, magre-return na yung value or the total. And this will be hold by itong total dito sa main. Then now, let's try to print. So, print lang natin siya ng ganito. Now, let's try to run this program. Okay, so we have the first prompt. Let's say 10. The second prompt or the num2 let's say 15. Pagkatapos natin mag-enter ng 15, ipapas natin yung num1, which is 10. Ang mag-hold dun is yung x. Yung num2 natin, which is 15, ang mag-hold dun is si y. Okay? So, dun sa variable total, i-hold niya yung sum ni x plus y and will be returned dun sa nagtawag sa kanya, which is, this is the function call. So, at this function call, meron tayong total equals 2. Ibig sabihin, kung ano yung ni-return na value, will be saved dito din sa total natin dito and mapiprint lang siya. Now, tignan natin kung anong output. Na-print yung total na equals to 25. 
Okay, so correct pa rin siya. Bitin natin to ngayon guys. Ano ba pinakaiba ng total dito sa my function compute and this total? So, pag ganun guys, meron tayong dalawang variable name na magkapareho pero magkaiba sila ng lalagyan or function. That is what we call as the local variable. This local variable is different with this total. So, to better understand that, let's create different functions. Okay? So, copy this code muna and I'll be explaining kung anong ibig niyang sabihin. So, ngayon guys, dito sa code natin, meron tayong dinagdag na functions. Okay? So, meron tayo ng average function. Wala siyang i-accept na parameter, pero ang gagawin niya is to compute the average ng total dito sa function compute divide by 2. Bakit po divide by 2? Kasi po, dalawa po yung variable natin. Si variable num1 and num2 na in-input ni user. So, after computing that, ipiprint niya lang po yung average dun din po sa loob ng function na yun. So, ibig sabihin, wala tayong return. Then, next, gumawa din ako ng main na function. Ito ang yung unang code natin kanina. Nilagay ko lang siya sa separate function. So, kung titingnan natin, we have three functions na. We have the function compute, yun yung una natin ginawa. The average and the main na function. Okay, so basically, itong main na function na to is ito lang din yung una natin code kanina. Ginawa ko lang siyang functions to separate yung mga total natin para may pakita natin yung different ng local variables. Then after that, of course, we're going to call the main function para po may maran tayo. And i-call din natin yung average function. Let's try to run this program. So, dito meron tayo ng prompt natin. We have the enter a number. Okay? Basically, yun po yung prompt natin dun sa my main function. Okay? That is the first prompt. Let's try 10. And the second prompt or the second number, let's try 15. Okay? Pagka-enter natin, meron tayo dito sa main function natin na i-call natin yung function compute. So, ibig sabihin yung num1 and num2 natin will be passed kay x and y of variable and that will be saved dun sa variable total sa loob ng main na function. Now, let's try. Na-print po yung total. Okay? Ibig sabihin, okay ditong part na to kasi nakapag-print tayo dito sa total natin. Pero, meron po tayong error dun sa my average. Okay? So, sabi niya, dun sa my average, the total is not defined. Bakit total is not defined? So, ibig sabihin, guys, iba yung total dito sa function compute, iba yung total dito sa function average, and iba din po yung total dito sa my function main or sa main function. So, how do we fix that? Dapat yung value dito sa my total natin dito will also be the value dito sa my average and also be the value dito sa my total. To fix that guys, palitan natin tong local variable na to. Tanggalin na natin to kasi hindi na tayo gagamit ng local variable. Ang gawin po natin is gawin natin global variable yung total. Okay, pag sinabi natin global variable, yung magiging value niya ngayon dito sa my function compute will also be the value dito sa my function average and dun sa my main function natin. Pero dito sa may main function kasi natin, nung kinol natin yung function compute natin, pinas natin dito. So, basically, pareho talaga sila ng value. Okay? So, now, try natin itong i-run. Tignan natin kung babalik yung error natin kanina. So, we have here the error kanina. Ito yung first run natin. Ngayon, we have the second run. Try ulit natin ng 10 and 15 for the second number. Okay? So, makikita natin nakapag-compute na po siya ng total and nakompute din niya po yung average. Okay? So, nawala na po yung error natin na not defined because the variable total becomes a global variable. So, that's it guys. These are the examples of functions in Python programming. Kung nakatulong tong video na to, don't forget to like. And of course, kung gusto niyo pang matuto about computer programming and other computer stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more tutorial videos. Bye!